also feel that I'm quite back footed, also quite back foot heavy. I can actually feel that is better. I'm not totally equal on both feet, but I'm certainly better than I was. The problem I've had with using this is I can't get it any further forward in the box and I can't bring my cell any further back and I've put the straps back as far as I'm sort of comfortable with. So um, I've, I've basically, once I'm up, I'm feeling that I'm very, a lot of back foot pressure to make the foil fly, um, probably because it's got quite a short fuse. So what I've done is I've put a little shim in here, which normally would go in the back. So the, sh the shim itself is actually to try and flatten it off. So I put it the other way around to actually give it a little bit more negative pitch. So what it should be doing is pushing it down, which should lift up the front foil. So what I'm hoping is that will basically get rid of some of that back foot pressure. So that is the plan. everyone wanted to talk to you about the uh, the shimming and why I'm having to do it with my Armstrong kit but before I get there a bit of background as to why I'm now on Armstrong kit um, so what happened when I very first started wind, wind, wind foiling was um, I was on slingshot kit brilliant really really good stuff I really enjoyed using it um, but I found that I was starting to go out with more power starting to do a lot more you know hard up wind starting to try and do sort of tacks and things like that which you know meant a lot of you know heel pressure and stuff and what was happening was i was coming back in and i was finding that the two bolts that attached the mast to the fuselage were were bent so what was happening was is i was basically putting so much strain and this is exaggerated but i was bending these bolts so when i was coming to take them out they were all wobbly um, I went out next day and did exactly the same thing again and it turned out that what I'd done is I'd actually bent the edge of this which meant that it was no longer flush and it meant that there was an ability for it to like bend or re really easy so I had to have it cut down to make it nice and flat again then I went back out and then I did it again so after three sets of bolts um, and one cut down I, I realized that probably I'd got to sort of the the, the limits of what uh, my slingshot kit could do for me for winging so I um, decided to buy uh, a gong setup. I managed to find a nice cheap gong setup. Um, and that does away with that problem because it has a different setup for its mast. So you have this, this insert and your mast actually sits inside. So most of the strain is actually taken into the fuselage from the mast by this cutout. And the screws are simply there to hold it in place. And uh, you know it works really well. Um, the problem I have is that the gong kit does not work for wind foiling. Gong fuselages are very, very short. Um, and I tried it, it just doesn't work. You cannot get enough back foot pressure on to, to get it to rise. It, it, it just doesn't work. If they had uh, an extension, then, then yes, it would work, but they just don't. So I ended up having to have a set of gong and a set of slingshot, which I didn't really want. I wanted one set that could hopefully do both. My primary focus is on winging, but I still really enjoy wind foiling every now and again. So um, I was looking around for something that might be able to do both. And from previous experience, what makes things stable, what makes wind foiling work is generally the length of the fuselage. Now, the problem with this is it's very, very short. So I looked at Armstrong because they do three different lengths of fuselage. They do a 50, a 60 and a 70. And the 70 fuselage is not far off what the slingshot was. So I thought, you know what? There's a really good chance that this could work. Plus, Armstrong have got really good selection of front wings. You know, big ones, medium ones, fast ones, and all sorts of different ones. And I thought, you know what? This could work. Because I want to go down to one set of kit. So um, I got rid of the gong, and I got rid of my slingshot. I took a chance, and I bought a Armstrong setup. Now... The Armstrong setup as well 
uh, has a different way of attaching the mast to the fuselage. Um, the fuselage is hexagonal in shape. The inside of the mast is hexagonal. This fits in, it fits nice and snug. So the torsion and the bend is all taken within the shape and the screws, once again, a bit like the gong are there to hold it all in place. So you're not relying on screws to take these really big loads. So you can see here with the Armstrong stuff is that um, they have the fuselages, uh, sorry, the, uh, the mast is all in one piece. Um, you have this hexagonal uh, cutout in, within the actual mast itself. Obviously the fuselage is also hexagonal and when they go together, it's simply a case of slotting it in, positioning it, and then once you do that, you tap it in, you tap it to the point where you can screw it in. But unlike the other, uh, the slingshot, all of the actual twist and the torsion is taken through the shape and the fitting rather than by the nuts and bolts. So the nuts and bolts are just there to now hold all this in position. So there's no particular strain or stress on them. So that, that's the reason that um, for me, it works a lot better. Um, there is no movement when I when I actually use it and I don't feel any wobble. So that, that's the reason that it's good. Plus also, uh, there's a lot of carbon in it. For me, it's a much lighter system. You've probably seen from some of my other videos that uh, I do have to walk quite a long way to get to the water sometimes. Um, so <laughs> lightness is all good. Um, so that, that's one of the reasons I've gone to it. So that was what I went for with that. I went for the 70 fuselage um, because it would work for winging because I know the slingshot did work for winging, but it would also work for wind foiling and using it for winging, fantastic. Really, really lovely, great. Started to try and start using it for wind foiling and found that it was very, um, so Armstrong uh, foot uh, tracks are quite a long way forward in their boards. They want their foils very much in the center. So. Um, they design it to do that, that the, that the wings are actually quite close to the mast. So I had to have this as far forward in my, marsh, my, my track as I could under my board, but it still wasn't really far enough. It probably needs to go about another inch and a half, but I just can't get it any further forward. So what I've done is I've moved everything on top back. I've moved my mast back, I've moved my foot straps back, and it actually made a really big difference. I, I was able to get really nice flying around, but I was getting a bit tired on my back foot after a while. So I thought, right, well, what else can I do? Um, so I, I looked at the design of what these are and then there was a thing about shimming and what the Armstrongs allow you to do is actually shim the back wing. So when they come out like so, they have actually got built in now uh, one degree of negative pitch. So it, it's not completely straight down the center of the, of the, the fuselage, it's actually, a slight offset and that's built into it like so and the idea is is you can put these shims in at the rear so if you put a one degree a red one in at the back you actually angle your uh, rear stab that direction and what that does that takes away that um, deflection so it's actually negative oh, sorry it's neutral so you can go neutral or you can actually add another one and you can go one degree of positive or one and a half or a half so I thought, well, actually, let's 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 think about this. So, what I then decided to try and do was instead of putting the shim in the rear to actually give this. So this is going to be very exaggerated. So if you put the shim in the back, you do that. If you leave it like so, it's actually got that. It's got one degree of that, and then to get rid of that, you put a shim in. So I thought, what about if we do it the other way? Let's put a shim at the front and do more and more of this angle. So what I've done is I've got one of these shims. That's what they normally look like. I've cut the end off it. I've bent it slightly. And now, if I put it in on the front, it actually lifts the foil rear stab up that way. And that has now put two degrees of negative pitch, two degrees of negative pitch. So the foil actually sits like that. So what that now does is, in effect, is it makes it do that. So what that is now doing is constantly pushing down on the tail, lifting the front foil, which is in turn, same as me, putting my back foot pressure on. So what that's now done is relieved, sorry, alleviated some of my back foot pressure. So I thought, right, give it a try. Took one of these, put it in the back, went out, bang, worked. And it's not quite there. I'm not saying it's completely balanced, but it's about 51% front foot, 
uh, sorry, 51% back foot, 49% back uh, front foot, which is which is doable. I mean, literally, it's it's about half an inch now on my foot straps, which I've now moved. I've moved my foot straps another whole back, completely balanced. So, a little piece of plastic um, put into the right place has had a huge effect on the ride and the setup. So. That, that's basically how that works. So I'll put it together and I'll just show you what it looks like when it's in and, and how you do it. Um, so basically on the Armstrongs, the, the, the rear stab sits underneath. So that's how it works. So it's all sort of a bit back to front. So the way to basically put it in is put your front screw in. Sorry, put your rear screw in. Only do it up a little bit. Get your shim that would normally go in the back and then just put it in so that it grabs there, turn it in, and then you just insert your front one as normal. And that's in, as you can see, that sits quite flush. So this is raised ever so slightly, not a lot you can do about that. But that has, so being exaggerated, done that to my rear stab, which is in turn pushing down, which is lifting up the front foil, which is the equivalent of me putting more back foot pressure on. So one single piece of plastic put in has made a massive difference. Now you can do multiples. So they are designed that you can do uh, a one degree red plus a half a blue or one blue. You can do what you need to do. So the next thing for me to try to see if I can get a little bit more, um, a little bit more sort of get rid of a little bit more that back foot pressure is I'm actually going to do two of these. I'm going to do two degrees, um, but that's that's basically how that works. Um, really simple to do it as well. So basically, get your shim before you've cut it down. Place it in, and then obviously do it up. And what you will see is your shim will be sitting out like so. Just get yourself a pen, mark it up, and all you've got to do is now cut that off and sand it until you can't see any more of the black, and you will have a shim that works. So there you go. That's how to shim a 70 centimeter Armstrong fuselage for wind foiling to take away a little bit of that back pressure if you can't get your mast any further forward. Obviously, I don't know how much that is, a couple of dollars, a couple of pounds, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than you know a new fuselage. So it's gonna work for now. Um, I don't wind foil it often enough to, to, to really sort of go for a, a longer one. If I could get one, then I would. Um, but there you go, and that's how that works.